afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another propaganda cast. Larry, with me, your host, Imperial Dane, Master of Instruction. And we're off here to have a look at the Raketenwerfer 43. Yes, indeed, the Raketenwerfer is werft the Raketen. And it is a rather particular and rather unique anti-tank gun. It's one of the cheaper ones, though not the cheapest. That goes to the Soviet 47mm anti-tank gun, though otherwise for more non-doctrinal, it is one of the cheapest along with the Americans M1. So in that apartment there, already something to sort of distinguish. It's also the earliest available anti-tank gun in the game, since it's available right here from the headquarters, and doesn't require any doctors as well. So it is very much unique in that regard. Of course, it also benefits from the five levels of veterancy. So of course, that's another thing there, but that's rather standard for the Orba Commando Vest. And of course, one thing that also has to sort of be mentioned about it, rather off the bat, is that unlike any other anti-tank gun, it can actually be garrisoned. Which of course is quite handy in some regards, because it also means essentially you don't have to worry about managing things once it's in there, since of course one of the things that can happen to the opponent maneuver can't have to shift around inside a building though, the crew sort of handles it automatically, it also means it's pretty much a lot harder to basically outmaneuver and sort of clear up the crew that way. One thing though also important to note is it actually has a short range, in fact it's the shortest ranged anti-tank gun in the game, until it reaches veteran to four, at which point was it? Then we lost to 4, which then sort of gets in more of a normal range compared to the other anti-tank gun. But of course another reason you also want to stuff it in buildings is, well, there's no actual gun shield, no protection for the crew, which means the crew out in the open is noticeably more vulnerable than any other anti-tank gun crew as well. So there are a few things there to keep in mind in that department as well. Though another little benefit is you can also retreat it, which means in some regards handled properly, it's also a more survivable anti-tank gun in some regards. So that is also a little vital keepsake to keep in mind, since that does help you actually keep it alive, and that's something you want to do, just like any other anti-tank gun, of course. It just also, of course, like any other anti-tank gun, gains a lot of veterancy very quickly. I mean, that's something anti-tanks rather than common. They don't need a lot of experience, they need to shoot a lot of armor, tanks and vehicles. The game that, and of course, here's the thing though. Just like a Veteran 3 field gun or Veteran 3 pack 40, it's quite the madness. So it's a Veteran 5 a Ketan Man for an absolute menace. Because overall, as it sort of gains more bonus, it becomes a lot more lethal as it gains a very high rate of fire. It doesn't gain any penetration bonus, though, it's got a decent penetration. What it does gain, of course, is more range and a constantly increasing rate of fire, which makes it very, very lethal. Plus, it can actually camouflage. A veteran 1, a veteran 3 actually gains a bonus, which on the first strike actually gives it more penetration, also more damage. So, in that regard, though, while and initially, Rakedmiaf is probably one of the weaker anti tank guns in some regards, at veteran 5, it's probably one of the stronger ones for several ways. And of course, then something very important to keep in mind for two reasons, of course. For one, of course, is as you're the opponent, you know, you want to then be careful and you want to clear it out. And of course, that's also. As the one who has it, you want to keep it safe because your opponent will want to wreck it or kill the crew. Because again, I mentioned five, a Kirtan Mirtha is an absolute menace to any armor. Any tank caught within his range of fire is going to take a lot of punishment. And that's really sort of the longer term game of the Kirtan Mirtha that is just dishing out tons of punishment. So in that regard, you really want to take care of your kid members. You want to sort of slowly nurse them up to those levels of veterancy where it becomes an absolute menace to your opponent. But again, you know, at raw veterancy, at veterancy nil, it's very weak. In fact, and to some ways, it would actually be very vulnerable to, say, heavy arm in particular. Say an IS-2 or a KV-8 could very quickly move up and clear it up in particular because it doesn't really have much of a range to sort of fully extend with which also means it has to sort of be closer to things, so that's a little thing to keep in mind. Of course, also danger of stuffing in buildings is, of course, your opponent might just decide to wreck the building, and that can also happen quite easily. Demolition charges, satchel charges, artillery, all those things, so you have to be a bit more careful when putting them in buildings, since in that regard, you know, you end up instantly losing the raket meth without any chance of recovery, and of course, you also want to be careful it doesn't end up in your opponent's hands. Now, of course, the thing to note is your opponent won't be able to get full benefit of it due to the fact that the five level veterancy are unique to the Orbital Commander vest. So, say your opponent catches the Raketen Mirtha, he only gets f about half of it, I think, you know. Veterancy 1, Veterancy 3, and Veterancy 5, I think, are the bonuses, which pretty much means, for example, stuff like 
you know, higher rate of fire in the higher range, for example, it won't apply to it even at veterans you flee. So that's also a little neat thing to keep in mind with your kit in there for in the heat of battle, but still you don't want it to end up in your opponent's hand because it can still cause you quite a headache if wielded properly. But again, you know, very vulnerable, very vulnerable in some regards, but again it can also be very powerful on the other hand, so it's sort of a little bit of a balancing act there with the Ked and Merfa. But overall I think that rather to a large extent sort of covers the, well, the Ked and Merfa, what it can do, what it can't do, what it should do and what it shouldn't do, and of course how you can deal with it as a an opponent, and again, you know why you want to deal with it as a opponent. I mean, and generally, any, you always want to clearly, quickly clear out any veteran anti tank gun, but the like Kedmev, again, more so due to the simply the increased lethality you can possess compared to any other weapon of that kind. I mean, the anything that, only thing that might be able to sort of really give the same kind of fit is a Pack 43, and certainly an Orbicom under this Pack 43 would be quite the cause for concern. That of course is another entire discussion, but again, you know, small, nimble, can stuff into buildings, can retreat, but again, vulnerable, can be cleared out reasonably easy if you're not careful, but again, can be very lethal in the longer run. I think that rather covers the Raked and its strengths, its weaknesses, what you want to do with it, and so on. So, if you learned something from this, you know, feel free to subscribe, feel free to share with people, let them know, let them learn, or keep them ignorant so you can beat them easier. Though I would prefer if you shared. Anyways, this is Imperial then saying cheers, and hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you all tomorrow.